All right, hey YouTube mandolinists. Um, in this video, I thought I would show you a little bit about how to develop a really nice, clean, smooth tremolo on the mandolin. And of course, the tremolo is really important for a whole bunch of different mandolin styles. Uh, but even if you don't play uh, in a lot of styles that use tremolo, the tremolo technique that you use is really essential for being able to play at faster speeds. And when I say faster speeds, I'm talking about speeds beyond 100 beats per minute or so. Um, I found in my playing that once I get to about 100 beats per minute, the technique that I use for playing uh, with my right hand, um, I kind of hit a wall. And you really have to transition to a different right hand technique beyond that 100 beat per minute wall uh, in order to play at those faster tempos. And the technique that you use is pretty much based on the tremolo technique. So no matter what, I think it's pretty important to actually develop that tremolo technique, even if it's just so that you can play uh, easily and cleanly at those faster tempos. Let's talk about uh, rest strokes because this is sort of the foundation of the tremolo. Um, what I'm going to start doing is let's set our, our metronomes and you do need a metronome for this. Um, let's set it to a nice slow tempo like 58 and it's clicking out quarter notes now. And what we're going to do, we're going to take an open string, uh, I think the D string or the A string works really well for this. And we're just going to play uh, down strokes on those quarter notes. It's going to sound like this. Now, pretty simple. But as you're doing this, one thing you really need to do is, if you'll notice, as a, every time I pick through that D string, my pick is actually coming to rest on the A string below it. So I'm picking through, the pick is coming to rest on the A string, and then I'm lifting up and doing it over again. And that is what's known as a rest stroke. So our, our metronome is still at 58. Um, we've just been playing quarter notes, and now we're going to play eighth notes. So we're going to play two strokes, two down strokes. Per beat, and we're going to play both of those eighth notes as a downstroke. So it's going to be. And try to accent that first eighth note. Try to make it just a little bit louder and then back off. If you want to do that by making the first eighth note uh, a rest stroke and then the second one a free stroke, that's fine. Um, but make sure you get locked in with the metronome and you get um, locked in with making that first down stroke be just a little bit louder so you can really hear where the beat falls. Okay, uh, now um, I'm sure you probably guessed we're going to move up to 16th notes. So there's going to be four strokes per beat. And we've just been using down, 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 down. Now it's going to be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So we're going to shift to alternate picking now. Let's end. But still, make sure that first down stroke is a rest stroke that hits your A string. The other three uh, up, down, up strokes, I don't care. They can be free strokes. But make sure at least that first one is going to be loud a nice loud down uh, rest stroke and then you're going to back off with the others so it's going to sound like this okay uh, so you're going to do that for a little while and now we're going to shift up to 30 second notes and this is where it starts to get difficult for beginning mandolinists um, because your arm starts to tense up, you can't really, it's harder to hear the rhythm of 30 second notes. 
Um, the way I like to approach it is to just think you were just playing four notes per beat. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now you're going to play eight notes per beat. And if you have to like count it out in your head beforehand, that's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 So it's going to be down, up, 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 down, you're going to start to, instead of thinking about every individual stroke your hand makes, you're going to start thinking of them in groups of eight. And the group of eight is going to begin every time the metronome clicks. So you're going to start thinking of it. So just get that in your head. And then just work at it. If you have to go down to slower tempo, that's fine. But... to make sure that that first accented downstroke falls right on that metronome click. And so what you're doing is you're actually doing something that's going to be really useful for helping you play at faster tempos, which is when you shift from those 16th notes to those 8th notes, your brain kind of has to shift from controlling every little, from thinking consciously about every little up and down stroke that your wrist makes. And all of a sudden, it's going to kind of upload, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of outsource those up and down strokes to your wrist, to the muscle memory in your wrist. So your brain is no longer burdened by thinking about every little stroke you're going to make. All it's concentrating on is getting that first accented downstroke to be right on the metronome click. And then your wrist is going to be able to keep the rest of the seven notes going just fine. Okay, still doesn't quite sound like tremolo. Let's take it up a little bit. Now, uh, another thing I forgot to mention, once you get to those 30 second notes, your wrist is probably going to want to, your arm is going to tense up, you probably might start to want to lock your wrist and play more from your forearm. you got to really resist doing that um, because that's going to hurt you. Um, what you should be doing is it's natural for your wrist, for your arm to tense up a little bit when you get to those faster notes. but really resist that because the feeling that you want, and it's a hard feeling to describe if you if you haven't had it, but it's a feel a very relaxed feeling coming from your wrist. You're, there's going to be a little bit of motion coming from your arm, it's true, but most of it's going to come from your wrist. And once you get good at it, it's going to feel so relaxed that you feel like you could do... You should feel like you could do that all day long <laughs> or or at least for you know five or ten minutes without stopping because you're because your wrist is going to be so relaxed and so you really want to focus on having on making it be relaxed and I think that's one of the hardest things for beginners to get because you say how can how can I control my hand that fast without tensing up and it sounds like a paradox but I, I assure you Keep practicing at it, and once you get the hang of it, honestly, it, 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 it did take me a couple months of practicing. Um, but then you will kind of lock into that feeling of looseness um, uh, that, that you can get even when you're playing it very fast. You know, so it will start to feel very loose. Okay, let's, let's crank up the speed to 66. Um, you know, as you're practicing, you might want to, you know, crank the metronome up two stops, and every time you move the metronome up, start with the quarter notes again. Now eighth notes. All down strokes. And move this down. So all down strokes eighth notes now. And 
once you start playing those 30 second notes, you're going to focus on two things. Keeping your wrist relaxed and making sure that first rest stroke falls is locked in with the metronome beat. Um, once you get good at it, you can take it up even further. We'll take it up to, to 80. Now, quarter notes, eighth notes. actually starting to sound like tremolo. Now you practice this, you can, <laughs> it's, it's actually really amazing how fast you can do this with a, a feeling of, of relaxedness in your wrist. Um, I've got the metronome set at 92 now. limit of which I can I can uh, pick fast. Um, the point is you're learning to do a measured tremolo. Um, and when I say measured, I mean you're being very metrically precise about it. You're playing, you know exactly how many notes you're cramming in to each one of those quarter notes. Uh, when you're playing 30 second notes, you're, you're cramming eight in there. And so you're just, just a matter of hearing that. Uh, now, when you get to faster tempos, um, you know, a lot of, of professional bluegrassers might play a tune at 120 beats per minute, which sounds like this. Okay, when you're playing that fast, your tremolo is probably only going to be uh, 16th notes. So, dun, dun. I'm playing 16th notes, well, hell, I can crank it all the way up to 168 then. Okay, so, and you know, once you get good at this stuff, you don't even have to start with the quarter notes or the eighth notes or the 16th notes. You can just, you know, set a tempo, boom, boom, and then immediately hear the 32nd notes. Da, da ba 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 I would spend, if, if this is new to you, I would spend two months at least practicing this, getting it up to speed, getting it to feel relaxed, um, and uh, before you try to work on playing at, at this really fast tempos. Once you get that, uh, a nice thing you can do then is to uh, start to play scales with that. So you might you might set your metronome at 76 and you might decide to play a D major scale. And again, you're hearing, I'm really being careful to articulate that first note. That's what makes it sound like tremolo notes and not just a massive stream of picking. Okay, um, so you're going to practice that and then eventually you could do... do just two notes per note. And then you're really only one step away from being able to play um, at, what is that, about 152 beats per minute, which is really freaking fast. So, um, so go take that, practice that. Um, once you get good at it, come back for the second video and we'll talk about uh, playing at faster tempos.